now comes to the other topic that is labor reforms labor reforms <coughs> now if you see your syllabus if you see your syllabus there is a topic called in your main syllabus there is a topic called employment there is a topic called employment say so that's a very important topic now this year and see uh, from your prelims and mains point of view that topic is very important from employment related in that only this topic will come or this called as labor reforms okay now again when you answer your mains question there is a very important initiative taken by the government of india in order to ensure that we attract more investment to the country and that major initiative is what is called as this is very ease of doing business in india and this is the core topic is all about if you talking about labor reforms and if you are not what you need to mention it ease of doing business in india now think about the ease of doing business in india the time the government have come to power one of the aim of the present government is to improve the ranking the world bank have every year comes up with a report what is called as ease of doing business in india report and after this government have come into power they have there is an improvement but not to that extent but now now their ranking is as per the latest data the ranking is 130 out of 189 just check it i'm not factually i'm not sure but rank is like this it was in 140s when they came to power but it's still in 130 only now what is this topic is all about to do business in india so to do business in india is not easy as we think it's very difficult to run a business in india there are lot of hurdle is there lot of hurdle is there in relation to doing business in india one is in relation to land land i'm not discussing that but again land reforms is very important because of so land related you know that na land acquisition is a big issue in india so land reforms have to be there to ensure ease of doing business in india then second is labor reforms labor is a big issue so land reforms is another issue see these are the complaints against india in india labor laws are very stringent very difficult for a business to run then another issue is regulatory regulation over regulation india there is over regulation so these are the then there are lot of things are these are the general three major hurdles in uh, in in relation to which creates a major hurdle to do business in india so i'm not talk i'm not going to talk about land reform or over regulation i'm going to talk about labor a different topic labor reform and trust me this year you will get a question on labor reform you will get a question on i don't know from which angle labor reform will come either it can be on textile package labor reform or labor reform in general okay now regarding this labor reforms <coughs> the there are as of now now just have an idea regarding the labor reforms in our country as of now we have 44 central laws how many 44 central laws relating regulating labor related with labor and 100 state laws <coughs> all there are some laws i'll see actually out of this four uh, uh, i'll discuss few central laws which is having a major hurdle 
for doing business in India. Okay, and what are the uh, effect of it? Now you take the case of Factories Act. Factory, say again, most of the laws are uh, just uh, we passed it after independence. Okay, the Factories Act, 1948. What is this act is all about? Factories Act is all about is major purpose of Factories Act is is to ensure safety is to ensure safety of the people working over there major there are other things also there is to ensure safety inspectors will come and inspect inspectors come regularly to inspect the safety whether safety related features are there in that factory now you know in india now what, what for what purpose inspectors comes to the factory they never come for inspection they come for they come for don't write <laughs> don't write but reality is in fact when a factory owner when he hear that factory inspectors is there he will put a hat like this oh today 10,000 gone <laughs> because he will come and say that he will not look into anything else give my money take it and go if you don't give him he will use all the provisions of the law and will trouble you will ensure that at least for one week your protection is not happened so better give him money and start continue the production. So this is actually this is what is called as harassment from the inspectors. This happens in regularly, and you know how this and in which all factories this it is applicable. Now very funny thing is, as per the this act is still not amended. Factories Act says that a, a factory which is having ten workers and more. If it is having electricity connection, now tell me, is there any factory in India which is not having electricity connection? I don't think so in the present scenario it is because now our government says that we will be having electricity for all. Now again, so a factory with 10 workers and who is having an electricity connection will be come under this act. If so even a small factory, this inspector harassment will not, be, it's there. Then. Again, this definition says that 20 workers, 20 workers if it is no, no electricity connection. So, if there is no electricity connection and 20 fact, uh, people are there, then also it will come into force. So, this is one issue. Now, actually regarding factories act, the government how I am trying to, trying to amend it. You know, uh, just if a one month or two months, uh, one month back there was a strike labor strike if we don't look into the factor for a holiday uh, it was a labor strike La last september 2 was also there you know why for what purpose they are gone for a strike they are gone for a strike against the government attitude towards the labor anti labor attitude what is this anti labor attitude government is going to reform these labor laws so don't write in that way be, be neutral what i'm trying to say is the, the, the government initiatives, government are, is trying to bring a uh, lot of changes to these, uh, uh, these laws. See now try to understand, all these laws have origin in the 1940s, just we became independent. Do you think that it is the same India? No, India have changed or the world have changed. So we need to be, see we are now a part of a is a concept what is called as global value chain bring this it's a core point global value chain where where production happens at different parts of the world now if india is part of this global value chain if there is any if there is any uneasiness in doing business in india it will go to some other country and we will lose the business we will lose investment we will lose growth we will lose uh, jobs so in this highly competitive era we can't lose anything especially in relation so we need to understand the present it's a globalized era where global value chains play a role major role in relation to the production now anything which affects the production it is the country's loss. This labor union have to understand first that. Okay. No one from labor union. Na? 
Okay, now it's only, I'm talking about the reality. If it is there, leave it there. <laughs> okay, now come back. <coughs> so, what I'm trying to say, in this answer, you need to address, when we talk about labor reforms, this key point, how to, who is it? Yes, silence it. Nice song. Okay. <laughs> but not in the present context. A global value chain. <coughs> So what I'm trying to say is labor reforms, when we talk about labor reforms, we need to address ease of doing business. Now for that, why we are so much, the government is giving so much uh, 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 pressure to this uh, improve its ranking because it don't want, already we have lost in this global value chain. Now again, we can't take risk. We need to come back and uh, be a part of it. So that anything which is creating a hurdle, we have to rectify it. So labor law is a problem. Then when it comes to Industrial Dispute Act, see, in the present era, setting up a company, and it's the company decision when to start, where to start, and when to wind up. You can't over-regulate it. Now, what the government have to do? Government have to ensure that the worker interests have been protected. Other than that, the government can't ask the company not to shut down. Industrial Dispute Act says that Industrial Dispute Act says that if the company is having this much of workers, that is the as per the act now it is 100 workers, even if it is want to wind up, it have to give two month notice to the government and the government it will take, see in India, if, if a company have to wind up, it will take years. If it is a loss making company and this loss may be due to the trade union problem, the trade union is adamant. In India, how many factories were closed because of this trade unions? Who benefited from it? So I'm not going to that angle also. What I'm trying to say is that there are, it's there in the material, our, our laws are not uh, inconsistent with the 21st century technology driven global value chain. So what is required is our labor law, how to change how to change and it has to be inconsistent with the present globally integrated uh, uh, society. So keep that in the mind and when we when we talk about labor law reforms, again when we talk, see the certain things, okay, September 2nd, the government have increased the uh, minimum wage, the government have increased the minimum wage. Now when we increase the minimum wage, again that should be given to the respective state government. It should not be decided by the sender. Because every state have follow a, and it should be the state who know the local condition better, local requirement better. Let them decide what should be their minimum wage for that state. Now take the case of uh, this, uh, any rural uh, Bihar district, and a person who is working in Mumbai. Can both of them have a same wage? No, it is different. So let respective state decide regarding that. So all the issues, major issues which you need to address is that what, what I'm trying to say is that labor law is a great hurdle for people to come and invest in India and start doing business. Now one of the, because see one of the major impact due to our stringent labor laws is, is there is an increase in number of contract labor. This point, it's a key point. One of the reason for the increase in the contract labor in India is due to our stringent labor loss. Now what this, uh, see contract labor is a loss not only for the worker, but it's also a loss for the company too. Now I'll discuss why the company then go for a contract labor. Nay, all the company will try to become very small. Why? Because if the number increases, all the act will come into their company. So to prevent certain acts to come into and the, the over, uh, we see there in the economic survey, this term has been used, regulatory cholesterol. This is not, it's there in our material. Economic survey says that in relation to our labor laws, in India we have, regu you know cholesterol, na? so cholesterol is for your health. So we have what is called as, regulatory cholesterol, mainly due to our uh, labor 
uh, stringent labor laws. So we need to address it. Otherwise, what will happen if the cholesterol is high and high and high? Similarly, that will happen to our country also in relation to economy. So if to prevent regulator, so what is so the sign of regulatory cholesterol is that the companies are increasing the contract labors. Now, what is the advantage of this company is that now this uh, contract labor will not be a part of the company's employee list. It is a part of the contract labors are the members or the employees of contract firms. So when it comes to the um, company list, they will not be part of the company. So that is one issue so that company can escape these stringent laws. Second is what will happen to the contract labors? Contract labors will have less wages over time. They will not get the same benefit like permanent workers. And the company will not train them also because company will not uh, skill up their uh, uh, skills because the company feel that it's not there and since they will not be there for a long term it is a company want company want permanent employees then only they can skill them to their latest technology and latest requirements but what is preventing them to do that it is again our regulatory law so again the the increase in contract labors in india and all over the world one of the major factors is again related with our labor stringent labor laws so address all these things in your answer and try to answer it rest of the things core point i have addressed which you need to bring you need to bring ease of doing business you need to bring global value chain you mention certain laws example give two or three law if it is required talk about this contract labor issue and talk about this concept what is called as regulatory cholesterol it is mentioned there in the uh, see now i'll tell you the reason why labor reforms come will will come this year economic survey have exclusively dealt with one chapter on labor reforms labor economic survey this year economic survey one there is a one exclusive chapter on labor reform so our material uh, i taken the major points from the economic survey one more topic is there on employment provident fund i'll take in the next class so <coughs> that is again related with uh, this uh, labor reforms only so since economic survey have exclusively dealt with labor reforms that is one reason Sec it shows that how much government has giving importance to labor reform second so that there are a lot of issues on labor related issues so that is so both shows that there is a 99 percentage chance that you will get a question on labor reforms now when you answer this question on labor reforms when you answer this question on labor reforms uh, keep this in mind actually i have put this word because so that you'll never forget it's of doing business it's not only about questions about effective implementation see we have labor we need to effectively implement our labor reforms in india then only our key goal of see this is one of the government's major goal of in india is to ensure that in india you can do business at ease with ease there there will be less regulation with especially in relation to labor so here give more importance what labor market and labor laws create as a hurdle to do business in india and then when so there when you talk about you mention this regulatory cholesterol and then you when while concluding you talk about global value chain you should go like this and answer it R write it today itself don't write it for tomorrow you will get a question again now come so this is about in general labor reforms all about there will be more updates before your exam if there is any updates i will inform you if the government see before the exam see labor reforms question will come if there is any update i will inform you now next topic last topic <coughs> there's a relation between uh, this textile package and labor reforms <coughs> maybe this uh, labor if textile package question can be in relation to labor reforms it's a simple topic uh, regarding textile package but again this also deals with
Now understand, this topic is about textile industry, especially now why the government have come with this package recently. Again, this topic is very, very important. Why the government have come with this package? It's because of the significance of this industry itself. What is the significance of textile? After agriculture, after agriculture, this is the sector where it create more employment. So, people, lot of people are, so textile industry is an industry area where we can create, so employment angle is one of the factors. Second is, in relation to export, it constitutes a major chunk of exports, textile industry codes, exports. So, then investment. So, these three angles are there. This. So, when we talk about employment, it is one of the labor intensive sector. Textile industry is what? It is labor, see, try to understand industries are two types mainly. Now, labor intensive and capital intensive. Textile sector is a labor intensive industry in the sense that if the textile sector grew, more people will get employment. Why? What do you mean by labor intensive? Because that sector will attract, because manual work is more in labor in this textile industry, textile work. You know that. Okay, unlike, so, so, if there is more growth in textile industry, we can create more employment opportunities. Okay. Now, so three angle, it comes, it deals with employment to ensure employment, export and investment. So, this package is all about these factors. Now, the major aim with relation to, see this uh, in relation to textile package, it has a labor reform angle. It has a export angle. Again, export is very important. I told you, we are having now that in the last two years, there is an export slowdown. If you want to increase the exports, we can do it by increasing the textile sector. Increasing the textile sector. Now, I will just give you a background of this sector before going to this textile package is all about. When the WTO came into existence, when WTO came into existence way back in 1995, under the WTO, there was one provision, major provision, which was there that there was a provision that before WTO, there was a concept what is called as multi fiber agreement was there. This topic is related with this multi fiber agreement. What is this multi-fiber agreement is all about is, there this developed country, because this topic you need to know this concept very well. Developed countries used to have quota. Developed countries like US and European Union will have quota from developed, sorry, from developing and least developed countries. Now, what is this quota? When you say quota, if suppose US will say that, US will say that India can export, see when talk when we talk about multi-fiber fiber agreement, it is only about textiles, there is this agreement is only dealing with fiber, multi-fiber agreement, it is basically dealing with textiles export. So, it says that, it says that, so US under the multi-fiber agreement will says that, in a year, India can export only this much. So, beyond that, if India want to export, India can't export because there is a quota restriction is there. For every country, for every country, US and European Union have ensured a quota and that have restricted free trade in relation to textiles. So, when WTO came into existence, it was clearly mentioned to all the member countries that this multi-fiber agreement will be dismantled in a certain period of time. So, dismantling of multi-fiber agreement result in what will happen? Now, India 
can access if india want to export more garments or apparels they can do that but here lies the problem when the multi fiber agreement was dismantled india could not able to use that uh, opportunity properly the global market was open widely who entered that time china entered and taken the market china was the late entry to china had a late entry to wto even though lot of restrictions were there on china but china using its ease of doing business china ensured uh, in its investment everything ensured that what happened was china completely <coughs> china completely taken that global market complete means the major chunk of the textile exports were taken up by china so that was the background and india started losing its traditional market slowly 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 now in 2013 sorry in 2000 yes uh, recently bangladesh and vietnam also overtaken say small country like bangladesh our neighbor now if you see the uh, textile exports bangladesh send more than india now vietnam see this is these two countries are very important for your this topic bangladesh and vietnam more than china so just have an idea what happened with these three countries china bangladesh and vietnam already told you after the dismantling dismantling of multi fiber agreement the market was captured by china now what happens to china now china presently is having a problem in relation to china is losing that competitive edge one is because of its rising wages in china rising wages and also now chinese companies are shifting from labor intensive to capital intensive sector so a, a huge market is going to be see already we lost a big market that is after dismantling of multi fiber agreement now the the chinese market so the china now dominating market will be open to everyone everyone means india bangladesh vietnam even uh, other countries also but our main competitors are bangladesh and vietnam already they are having an edge now what happened with india is one is related to our domestic related issues you know when we talk about infrastructure sorry when we talk top about exports the major issue when we talk about is in relation to infrastructural bottlenecks infra we have a ma see our major bottleneck is from infrastructural constraints the port the uh, clearance export clearance import thing if you want to see in india if you want to export something it requires 5 days to export you pack everything in a container then if you want to export so so much of delay is there in our so in relation to customs clearance in relation to uh, uh, port congestion then road so we already have that issue is there so one from the infrastructural rigidity or constraint our export competition is low second is our exporters were not getting uh, means uh, the the edge for china and other people the Chi especially for the chinese exporters chinese government used to give lot of duty drawback which i'll discuss it it means that chinese products will become cheaper in relation to indian products i'll discuss that what is this duty drawback i'll discuss that but along with that <coughs> and we have not uh, invested in in relation to technology front also the investment for india indian uh, textile industry was lesser along with that along with that what happened so that so in that because of these reasons we lost to china we lost to china then what happened in relation to bangladesh bangladesh is an ldc bangladesh is an least developed country Bang keep this in point bangladesh is a least developed country so us and europe import from bangladesh at a zero import duty so from bangladesh 
we, you, in the, the, there is a concept what is called as duty free quota free regime from LDCs countries it's a WTO principle duty free quota free if an exporting country is a least developed country nobody can't impose quota nobody can't impose import duty so as by using this and India is not an LDC so Indian Indian exports will have a customs duty in US so that was an edge for Bangladesh but Vietnam use like China how it's not because of LDC it's because of India's failure how utilized the market now presently Bangladesh and Vietnam is having it now my question is if China vacate from this big market China is not a, if that there is a chance is there then whether India can capture this or Bangladesh or Vietnam or some other will, country will take care of it that is the issue is all about for that to prevent for that incident to prevent the government recently have come up with a textile package so this is the background for the so we need to ensure that already Bangladesh and Vietnam have overtaken it now again there is one topic which I will be discussing which is again a very important topic uh, free trade agreement in that RCEP and TPP is very important now Vietnam Vietnam is also a TPP member Vietnam is a trans pacific partnership member so when TPP come into existence Vietnam will have more edge as a TPP member so it's very difficult for India to compete with in this Bangladesh as an LDC country and Vietnam as a TPP member will have a great edge over India in relation to textiles so Indian government have to do in relation so for that what the government have the government have come with fiscal incentives the government have come with lot of fiscal incentives that I have made it in the form of a summary it is given in your last page what the government will do in relation to what is the mission of this textile package is all about firstly see the main vision is again the, from the employment angle from the employment angle when the employment angle see we are we will be creating 10 million jobs or 1 crore jobs now very interesting factor is in this package is that a woman empowerment angle is there because in the textile industry in the textile industry 70 percentage of the people who are working are from women so if there is one crore jobs is there that will be who will be benefiting the most it will be women only so that point you need to address it then it will uh, it will have a there will be an additional exports we are planning so this is for this package is for next three years this package is for next three years so in the next three year we will uh, double our exports from textiles that is additional exports of 30 billion okay and that is again our primary aim is to regain from Bangladesh and Vietnam and for that what this package is all about is it is a 6000 crore package it is a 6000 crore package and the government have dealt in this way 6000 crore package 5500 crore for incentives fiscal incentives like duty drawback what do you mean by duty it's basically a tax duty or tax now when we talk about duty drawback it is basically customs duty now if if you are exporting something if you are exporting something and for the exporting items the input the items which you purchase or import or you purchase if you are paying tax for it the government will give you back that that is what is called as drawback if you have paid taxes if you have paid taxes for the inputs which you are using for export that duty will be paid back by the government then what will happen if that happens our textile products will become cheaper and thereby it will increase the it will increase the global it will help in helping in the global competition market means capturing the market 
so for that the government and one of the speciality of this duty drawback which was introdu uh, introduced is which was one of the uh, demand of the industry for a quite long time that till now it was only central levies central levies means central government imposed taxes now in this package even the state levies state tax also the if you are if the state have imposed any taxes this is very very important point in the new duty drawback state duties will be refunded so that was so that will because that is also costing <coughs> increasing the price of that particular product okay second is in relation to uh, we have a scheme called as technology upgradation fund scheme what is that technology upgradation fund scheme it is exclusively for textiles the scheme exclusively for textile textiles for what for improving the technological upgradation now we have amended it recently again again for this amended technology <coughs> fund scheme upgradation fund scheme what the government have done is again there is a very increasing thing that the government will give subsidy the government will give subsidy to jar new <coughs> textile or gar <coughs> garment industry where where it says that it will increase from it is presently giving 15 percentage subsidy from 15 percentage subsidy it will increase to 25 percentage but it is again a difference is there earlier the subsidies were input based but in this case the subsidy is output based it means that first you produce outcome then only we will give you subsidy outcome means you increase the employment increase the output then only we will give you that extra additional 10% subsidy so this is a game changer in relation to our subsidy regime where the government is looking for outcome rather than input so these changes have been added so this is one of this is the package is all about now see uh, this question can be only related with labor reforms i told you another question the upsc can ask question related with different dimension if the te textile package is relating with labor reforms there are labor reforms related measures been taken in this textile package which is mentioned in point form it's they said like <coughs> now the government have introduced flexibility in relation to law labor laws only for only for this textile industry what are that reforms it is mentioned one by one one is one is see, try to understand that this industry is a seasonal in nature like agriculture this is also seasonal in nature see our major uh, thing is in relation to cotton the major input for our textile industry is cotton and cotton you know it's a seasonal in nature so employment is also seasonal in nature now because of the seasonality in nature the workers for this industry is required for a particular season so what will happen with the seasonal workers is that they will not get the benefit of a permanent employee for that to ensure the government have introduced this concept what is called as fixed term employment this is one of the labor reforms introduced in this sector what is that fixed term employment where where the people who come as a seasonal worker also will get all the benefits equal salary equal working hours equal statutory dues statutory dues like employment pro provident funds everybody will get this so fixed term employment have been introduced so that so that the peop, uh, the people <coughs> who come as an employee will get all the benefits of a permanent employee so this concept you have to mention introducing uh, fixed term employment the concept i have uh, explained it in that material you please go through it but this point if the question is in relation to labor reforms you need to mention only these points then the other thing which uh, they have done is <coughs> in relation to uh, this income tax deduction see the textile uh, manufacturers can go for 
income tax deduction if if it he appoints new employees why the government giving deduction because it will create new employment but the condition was the condition was that the employee need to get 240 days of work then only the government will give deduction now this industry is a seasonal in nature so since it, it's seasonal in nature it's uh, that person will not get 240 days work for that only for this industry this deduction have been reduced from for, to get the reduction that number of days work have been reduced from 240 days to 150 days now what the industry will do they will they will employ more workers because if they employ more workers and since the new workers and surely they will get 150 days work and they can use that that salary extra salary as deduction in their profit so indirectly indirectly government with this reform what it is trying to do is it will result in new employment opportunities then the you know about employment provident fund we'll discuss in detail it's a employment provident fund regarding employment provident fund which is again a current affair regarding textile industry i'll say that see normally this provident fund uh, is shared means half half of the portion will be shared by the employer half is by the employee normally it is 12 percentage in the textile sector in the textile sector what the government have done is the employer's contribution of 12 percentage the employer contribution of 12 percentage will be given by the government for three years only for new employees and there is an option there is an option and that two people with the salary of 15,000 that is very important 15,000 not for beyond that and the ob there is that employee side employee can have an option the employees can have an option not to contribute to EPF if they want to take it as to home they can take it this is one of the demands of the uh, working people that they don't want to contribute to employee because they require for their daily expenses so two changes have been made one employers contribution the government will provide employees contribution have the employees have the option either to contribute or to withdraw and use it for its monthly expenses so this is again these initiatives again in relation to providing uh, employ from the employer side epf from the government already for a stressed industry like textiles in india will be a more booster and uh, it will result in so two things will happen in by doing these uh, packages one is it will make our textile products much cheaper it will revive our textile industry and the textile industry will go for uh, more investment it will go it will create more employment opportunity and thereby and thereby we can capture a huge market which will fall vacant because of china's move in away and so that that way you have to deal it and there are one more thing uh, the labor reform feature is there in relation to overtime this is very important overtime work see in many of our export cases you know that now labor standards will come a play as a hurdle labor standard ILO international labor organization there is a standard on overtime work it says that an employee can have maximum of eight hours overtime per week eight hours per week so Indian government have allowed means in the latest package we have increased our overtime work to eight hours and thereby again this extra work hour which will help them to get more income for the people who work so <coughs> in two ways it is good for the industry one the industry will have the liberty to increase the labor hour work and that too at a lesser time period because they can employ them for a seasonal nature and thereby and thereby the industry's products will become competitive 
So from the industry point of view, uh, point of view uh, there will be more production at a lesser rate. From the employees point of view, they will get better uh, wages and uh, more work and more job creation. By t and also they are, since they have been given fixed term employment, they will get all the privileges of a permanent employee. And from the nation point of view, it will result in huge investment, more employment generation and more export and thereby we can capture those market which we have lost before this multi-fiber agreement was dismantled. This way you have to answer if there is a question related directly with textile package. If the question is related with, see the question, see the question and address it accordingly. There are lot of points to this. You can write only 200 words, but if you want to get good marks, read the question, under the, understand the question properly and answer to the question only. Don't write what all things you know. See, now the problem with you is, you have lot of information. Now you are over content. So don't use that. Respect yourself and write the core points to the question and answer it. You will get good marks. So those who are writing mains this year, ensure that you sub write the answers today and by tomorrow, you will expect you can get one or two questions from today's topic.